Welcome to another episode of RAC Reviews. This is number 29. That's right, I am one away from number 30. Even though if it weren't for some stuff that was happening last year and earlier this year, I would probably be well past 30 reviews, but, you know, things happen. What can you do? You just move on and at least I'm trying my best to be a little more consistent, even if it's only once a week. You know, like I said, this is review number 29. I started with 24 back in September, so hey, I'm almost to review 30, and um, I don't think I'm gonna do too much special for review number 30, but I might try to change things up a little bit. Maybe just just a few things, not a whole lot. I mean, try to keep things about the same. But anyways, let's get into this review. And let's do a bit of a throwback review. An old figure from Jack Specific from about late 98 through 1999. Let's look at the boot. Yeah, about 98. Anyways, it's none other than Mankind. Have a nice day! Socko! Mr. Socko! <laughs> yep, this is a classic figure, you know. This is from the old days. I mean, you kids, you have it easy today with your basics and elites, which I collect too, but... You kids didn't have something like this that had like a little bit of articulation, you know, very low articulation. Face scan was not great even for McFoley. <laughs> and um Yeah, I mean we do have a Mattel version of this today, actually two Mattel figures of of mankind. Three if you can't catch this check for when it comes to McFoley in general, but you know, recently um we got Elite Series eight um seventeen back in twenty twelve, which is based off this figure, it has the same concept that you'll see in their view. And even though this is not the first Mankind, this one, it's the first one that inspired a Mattel figure, and then also that was a new Amazon exclusive Mankind, which I'm going to have my, you know, which I'll try to show you if I have it already, because as I'm filming this video, I'm waiting for a package from Amazon, and um, so depending on when it gets here, I guess I'll try to show it to you guys. Kind of breaking the fourth wall here, because I do some of these videos in advance, but yeah, whatever. Anyways, let's get into this review, and as always, Q&A and channel shout-out. So yeah, it's review time, and it's time to have a nice day. Alright, it is review time, and this right here is from Jack Specific. It's WF Bone Crunch in Action, Mankind. And yeah, there isn't too much to the figure other than a few little things. As you can see, it was pretty simple for what it was at the time, because... When I remember getting the wrestling figure collecting, figures were very simple and they weren't as great, but at the time we didn't know we were going to ever get real scan technology or, you know, better articulation. I mean, we just dealt with what we got. Heck, I can recall people that collected figures before me who had stuff like the Hasbro and LJ, LJN figures had it worse because the Hasbro figures had, like, weird-ass action features and the LJN figures had no articulation. So, this was a step up from those before we got to the Layer Jack stuff of Rufus Aggression, Deluxe Aggression, the Classic Zero Stars, and then of course the stuff we have today with Mattel, like the Basics and Elites. So, let's take a look at the figure. As you can see, he's wearing his mask. Now, the cool thing with this figure, and this was the first Mankind figure to do this, the mask is removable. Now, the face isn't really the best likeness of McFoley. Oh no, he fell over! Ah! That was not expected. Okay. This figure does not have the best stance either. I'm going to have to stance it the best I can like that. He's bent over a little because he. Well. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> I don't want to have to do a refilm of this because I hate recording a video over and over. But, anyways. Like I said, the figure is not the best likeness of McFoley. Not that McFoley is the sexiest man alive, but he's not the ugliest man either, I mean, it looks decently like McFoley, the hair is a bit darker than it should be, but, other than that, it looks like Foley, he's got the gap in his teeth, because he has, the, you know, a couple of his teeth missing, 
the, you know, the beard he's known for, long hair. And then he's wearing his, uh, tire he wore during, you know, his first, his second run as Mankind. The white shirt with a tie, this one's black. And he's got his brown sweatpants and black boots. And that's really about it. And the mask, of course, you know, take a look at it. It's got some nice detail. And it can easily go back on his face. And then the other accessory is his, well, Mr. Socko! Look at Mr. Socko. <laughs> Looks just like him. And it's detailed on both sides because you can put it on either hand. Which I'm going to demonstrate. You can take it off. It's, and of course, cloth. Very few times that Jack's ever used cloth. Even back in the old days. And there you go. And if you want to, it can go on his left. You know, I usually would put it on his right, but just as a demonstration. It doesn't fit on too easily. You have to kind of work with it a little bit. So, yeah, you may have to struggle get it on. I know when I got it, it was on his left and I put it on his right. You know, I think, Mr. Sucko, when you get it in the package, it's usually separate. And this Foley figure, I can't tell you what exact bone crunching set it would be from because Jax had a tendency to release figures over and over, you know, in different sets. Sometimes be single and sometimes two packs, what we call battle packs today. Oh, mask came off. I'll grab it in a moment, but there you go. We can put sock on his left, but I prefer on the right because I'm a right-hander myself. And I just remember him doing the mandible claw off his right hand. Ugh, it's a lot of pain in the butt to you know, get this back on his hand. So let me, hold on, I'm going to move him off camera. and I'm going to put his sock and mask back on and then we'll get to the articulation and the scale comparison. Now it's time for articulation, and well, yeah, as I mentioned, you, the Jax figures did not have a lot of it compared to you know the stuff we have today and later you know later on Jax stuff. Most Jax Bone Cruncher figures had maybe at most five points. You know this one looks like it might only have four. Usually, depending on how the head was made, sometimes it can be rubbery, sometimes it can be a little bit harder. This one has no head movement, and sometimes you could risk ripping the head off depending on the figure. But it does have movement at the arms, just back and forth like that. That's about it. He has no waist articulation, because most bone crunching figures did, but the way this Mankind figure is made, he does not have it. And then, that's the only movement he has is the legs. That's it. Now, the cool thing about these figures, though, that made them worth buying was the Bone crunch in action, hence the name. I'm going to take his mask off because it's going to get in the way. Should be able to hear. I mean, I don't know if this one has the bone crunching. It doesn't sound like it's, it has in the arm. Let's try the other arm. Yep, you, can you hear it? So, obviously, his left arm doesn't do it, but his right arm does. Now the legs. Okay, his right leg's not doing it. And it doesn't sound like his left is. Okay, his left just does it a little bit. Let me do that again. See? Sorry if I'm not demonstrating this the best. So, left arm and right leg don't really want to do the bone crunching action for me. Now, this was a figure I got at a flea market, so it probably has been played out a lot of times. And the bone crunch only works one way. You have to go up and down with, with whatever joint you're using. You can't go back like this, you know, it doesn't work, and they even told you on the packaging that you can't do that. But other than that, not much else this figure. I mean, hey, we came a long way from these to the what figures that we have today, and well, um, what was a cool concept? These were not the best figures for wrestling. They better than the LJ or Hasbro figures when it came to wrestling, but these were still not that great, but still were okay for what they were at the time. Now let's do some size comparisons. First, let's compare this Mankind figure with other, you know, McFoley related figures. As you can see, I have another Bone Crunch in action, Do Love, a Titantron Live Mankind, and then I got a Rufus Aggression style McFoley. Yeah, sadly no Cactus Jack. I don't have a Jack specific version of him. I have a Mattel version along with Mattel Mankind, but they're both men on cards, so yeah. No way for me to bring him down without getting him off the wall. I'm just going to leave them where they're at. But anyways, as you can see, he's a little bit taller than the Do Love. 
Shorter than the Titan Live version, which the Titan Live version is not that accurate because the fact that sleeves are ripped off. And then the Ruthless Aggression style version is taller, of course, because that's when Jack started making their figures much taller than, you know, you know, their earlier stuff. And their figures are still today taller than the Mattel stuff. And I used to have another Mankind I don't have anymore. It was one with his brown shirt that he first started wearing back when he first started Mankind gimmick and... Of course, they reused that look for the recent uh, Amazon exclusive figure. And maybe if I had it, I would show it in comparison. But this is just, I guess, a good idea to show you how this figure compares to other full figures I have in my collection. And finally, here's uh, the Jax Bone Crunch of Mankind in comparison to other Jax and some Mattel figures. And as you can see, of course, he is shorter than all of them because the Bone Cruncher figures were short. I mean, even AJ Lee's towering over, you know, Mankind. AJ Lee's only like five foot something. I mean, yeah, granted that, you know, Jax had a tendency to make all the figures the same height. I've never mentioned that a million times. Especially with that Hogan figure almost be as tall as Andre. <laughs> I mean, almost. I mean, the Rock's in good, decent scale. You know... If this were a Mattel version, the Mankind would come about up to the Rock's neck, maybe. Just, you know, if that was the Mattel version. But, obviously, you know, that was a Bone Crunch and Jack's version. And then, of course, I'm going to bring out this McFoley again. Kind of give you a good idea. What this McFoley looks like he's a little bit taller, but almost in scale to the Rock. But, yeah. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. As always, feel free to leave me your comments about this Mankind figure. Did you own it? Or if you were too young to own it, let me know. Do you have the Mattel version? And what do you think about this Jax version, you know? Because you kids, you know, you may love your figures now and say there's a few bad ones, but hey, we came a long way from... From man. A long way, man. <laughs> Anyways, um... Thanks for watching the review. Now stay tuned for the Q&A segment. Before I get into the Q&A segment, I thought I'd do this comparison real quick. Since this figure was inspired by the Jax version. This right here is the Mattel version. That's from Elite Series 17. And I'm not getting down for the wall because it's up there pretty high and I don't feel like removing it. But anyways, here's how the two figures compare. Pretty much the same concept. Both have a removable mask and the Mr. Sacco. So, thought I'd show it to you guys real quick. Alright, it's Q&A time. As always, you guys have questions, I have answers, and I'll try to always, you know, give you the best answers that I can. Sometimes short, sometimes long. Got my phone for you guys' questions saved. And as always, you guys can ask your questions here on YouTube, on Twitter, or, you know, ask my Facebook, which... For once, I got a Facebook question, and that makes me so happy. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate it, because I've been talking about Facebook for, like, seems like an eternity, and if I see somebody likes my Facebook, I mean, recently liked it, apparently. <laughs> it, it's got to be a slow process, but hopefully I'll get more people to like me on Facebook, you know, besides being here on YouTube and Twitter. So, yeah, um, so let's get into this Q&A, and I'll give you the best answers that I can. Alright, Joseph Hatcher, right here on YouTube, has three questions for me, but one of them is from Facebook. As, as I mentioned, I got a Facebook question, so he is my first Facebook question, so do I appreciate it. And remember, if you guys do ask me questions on YouTube and Facebook, remember, it is still a three-question limit. So if you ask me two on YouTube, then you can ask me one on Facebook, and that's it, or vice versa. So, you know, whatever. Or if you ask me one of each on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. But anyways, I'm going to get to the questions. First one, if you could design your own Elite Series... Who would be in it, and what would they come with? Um, I would try to do maybe a WCW or ECW flashback series. I would put Booker T in it. He'd come up here the WCW World Title, or maybe the Television Title because no one's come with that belt yet. I'd maybe put DP in there. He'd come with the United States Title. That'd be pretty cool. This is a long shot, and I don't think it's gonna happen. I'd put Goldberg in there, and he'd probably come with the World Title, or I don't know something. Um, of course, we're going to have a Sting figure, so, and it's going to be the Crow, and that's the fine moment, so, 
If I put a sting in there, it'd probably be like, you know, the blonde haired surfer sting. He'd probably have his jacket that he wore at the time. Um, he could have any color face paint. I'd probably give him his red, white, and blue paint that's similar to the uh, Ringside Collectibles Jack Specific TNA sting. Or I'd give him like blue paint or green or pink. You know, because Sting used to wear different colors of paints before he came the Crow Sting. And um, there are many others. As for the ECW set, I would try to include maybe Tommy Dreamer. He'd come with maybe a kendo stick, maybe, or a trash can. Um, Sandman would probably come with some of the same accessories. Probably come with beer, even though that'd be against the rules. You don't want to market, you know, beer towards kids. I'd probably include Sabu. He'd come with his uh, headdress he wore, and probably a table, because they like putting people through tables. And, well, even though they're not with WWE, as they're not on a um, contract, I'd probably put the Dudley Boys in the set, but... And, of course, you know, they'd come on tables, too, and their glasses. But, of course, that wouldn't happen. You know, because, once well, again, they're not with WWE right now, and WWE's not going to give Legends deals to current TNA superstars. Um, other than that, that's probably what I can think of. And if I did an Attitude Era related set, obviously it'd be kind of hard to think of who to do since everybody from the Attitude Era has pretty much been made to a figure. Like Austin, Rock, Jericho, Triple H. I don't know. I would like to see a Do Love figure at some point, but Mick Foley's kind of being stubborn about his uh, Legends. Yeah, it's ironic that I just uh, reviewed his Mankind figure, but Mick Foley, man, come on, dude. Sign your Legends deal. You want to do love, damn it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Alright, for Joseph's second question on YouTube, he wants to know, if I could save any wrestler who got fired from WCW, ECW, or TNA Impact Wrestling to come to WWE, or even a WWE wrestler to go to another company, who would it be? Uh, well, it comes to WCW and ECW, of course, those companies are our business, so anyone that could have been saved, I would have done it 10 11, 12 years ago before the company went out of business, but I don't know. WWE pretty much got everybody they could. I mean, I would have liked to have Sting back then, but, you know, that wasn't going to happen. Thankfully, Sting's coming now. I mean, he's not on TV with WWE right now, but at least he's getting, you know, there for legend stuff like figures and the video game and stuff and DVD. Um, when it comes to TNA wrestling, I don't know. I would like to see AJ Styles in WWE. He was nobody once. He uh, wrestled a dark match, or not a dark match, it wasn't televised, it was on that show that was in syndication that we never got here called uh, WWE Metal, I believe. And I think he wrestled one more um, live show or something before he went to TNA eventually. And then, yeah, TNA dropped the ball of AJ Styles. Um, when it comes to fired wrestlers from WWE, going to an company like TNA ROH. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, Drew McIntyre would be a good guy to go maybe to Ring of Honor. I don't, TNA's not doing so well. I, I can, I don't know. I just don't see anyone going to w, from WWE that's going to TNA. I mean, yeah, bro, Clay's in TNA now from what I've heard, but TNA's not doing so well. And I stopped watching it. And the fact that they'll even still be on TV next year, I mean, I would say don't get your hopes up, but uh, uh, who knows? Now, anything's possible. All right, now for Facebook question, which once again, Joseph, thank you for asking a Facebook question. I expect y'all of y'all to start doing the same pretty soon because I want more than just YouTube and Twitter questions. But anyways, this question on Facebook, he wants to know, who do you think is the best Ninja Turtles villain besides Shredder? Well, that's a hard one. I mean, Shredder is the top villain, you know, throughout the Ninja Turtles fandom, from the comics to the cartoons to the movies. Um, when it comes to the current cartoon series, I have to say the Rat King's kind of a good villain right now, compared to the 87 Rat King, who was just a sewer dweller, was not really as sinister, even though he was still pretty bad. And then there was the uh, 2002, 2003 Rat King from that cartoon, who was... I don't know, I never watched much of it. I think he was more of like a cyborg. I don't know how evil he was compared to, you know, the first incarnation and then the current incarnation. But the Rat King that's in the new series, I mean, he's pretty evil. I mean, the only other villains that, besides Shredder, that kind of comes close is him. And then there's Krang. I mean, uh, the Krang coming on me. The one who got the turtles. 
or coming to get the one called Krang. And oh God, I like the Krang from the from the '87 series better, or the Utrons from the 2K series. I mean, there's not a whole lot of villains that are better than Shredder. I mean, uh, there's a villain that was in the original cartoon series. I don't remember his name. Drago or something. Dr Lord Drag, I think his name was. After Shredder kind of became a minor character and they eventually got rid of Shredder. I, mean, I pretty much stopped watching the series at, at that point because I was in the Power Rangers. But So I have to say definitely Rat King comes close. But hey, you can't beat the Shredder because, well, Shredder kicks ass. <laughs> James F Fleming has one question for me. He says, they make many cartoons in the movies these days. What cartoon would you like to see made into a movie? And I hope you're including anime, because it's hard to say what cartoon I want to see. Cartoon now, I don't watch a lot of the new cartoons. A cartoon then I would like to see it as a movie. I mean, I mean, it's hard to really say. I mean, we already got Transformers, we got Ninja Turtles. I mean, uh, oh God, I don't even know, to be honest with you. But, if anime counts, I would love to see a Dragon Ball Z movie. Yes, we got a Dragon Ball Evolution movie back in 2008 or whenever it was that was okay and kind of left a little bit unanswered questions because the way the movie ended. And there obviously was never a sequel, but I'd love to see an actual Dragon Ball Z movie. I mean, try to make it action packed. I mean, obviously, a lot of the jokes and stuff from the, from the DBZ series would probably be left out. Try to get more of a serious tone, but I would love to see that, you know. Start off with Goku versus the Saiyans, you know, his brother Raditz, the Vegeta and Nappa, and then try to do a move with Frieza, then try to do with the Androids and Cell, and then end with, with Boo. I mean, that would be pretty cool. It would just be interesting to see how they would adapt it. And then, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to go on a long shot. I'd love to see a Pokemon movie. Wouldn't that be interesting? A live action Pokemon movie. I mean, yeah, probably most of the Pokemon would be CGI, but it'd be interesting. And you definitely got to have Ash, Misty, and Brock in there. And also, there'd be probably, you know, a little bit of love. You know, all the Poke Shippers out there would be happy. Everybody else would be mad, but... Because I can't see them doing a movie with, with the other characters like May, Max, Dawn, uh, Sylan, Iris, Bonnie, Clement, and Serena. Even though I like to see Serena. Serena, like, I like to her a lot. But and I liked May and Dawn, too. But, yeah, it's kind of hard to say what our cartoons. I don't know. Street Sharks? Cowboys Move Mesa? I don't know. Those are some obscure cartoons for you. <laughs> but, yeah, it's kind of hard to say. But right now, I'll definitely say Dragon Ball Z is the one I want to see made to a live-action movie. So, somebody do it. But I got one rule. Do not make it Michael Bay. Unless he's a producer. Director, not so much. These final questions come from Zachary Zierzow. The first one he wants to know, what is the worst WWE figure Mattel has made? The Power Slammers. Those were terrible. I don't know if you were referring to Basics, Elites, and Battle Packs. I mean, even if I don't collect the figure, I'm still not going to say it's bad. You know, I mean, there's some Basics that I don't want to collect, like the Million, John Cena, Rey Mysterio Basics, and some Car Basics, and Seamus Basics, and there's a few Elites I don't want, and very few, but it's hard to say, oh, this figure sucks, I don't want it, you know. I mean, if I don't want it, I don't buy it, I don't complain about it, I mean... I'll still say Mattel did all right job, but oh god, the power stars were horrible. I mean, Flex Force was bad, but it's nothing too bad as some of the stuff that we got when I was younger, like the Toy Biz stuff, which actually the Toy Biz stuff was good. I'm not gonna diss Toy Biz, you know, those W figures or TNA figures. Those were much better than the Flex Force. The Super Strikers look all right. I never care for the Rumblers, but I understand the collectability. Slam City looks pretty shitty though. I can understand. Oh god, that was. I can. Ugh. Those, but the Power Slammers were just, were just bad. I mean, those were the worst. So it's hard to say what the worst figure was, but figures, I'll give it definitely to the Power Slammers because those were horrible and I'm glad they were discontinued. Alright, for our second question, he wants to know who are your summer, some of your favorite YouTubers you watch? Um, Pixel Dan is one. I love his reviews and his turtle reviews. He. Even when he does like reviews I'm not really into, like sometimes he does some Masters of the Universe reviews, I'll watch them, even though I'm not it's not a cartoon I was ever into. Or if he does his blind bag videos with his wife, I like those videos. Um Sean Long's another good one, he does some pretty good reviews. Sharvish Prime's another good reviewer. 
trying to think of who else. I mean, there are others. Of course, I gave him a channel shout out, Combi101. If you haven't the channel shout out in my last video, he's pretty good. Does a lot of awesome Ninja Turtle reviews. And I also used to watch Swain Hollock, but he kind of disappeared. I mean, I guess Swain Hollock's busy with his personal life. So, I mean, that's why he hasn't been on as of late. Um, and then Matt Goldberg is another good one. He does some good stop motion animation for WWE, and then he does his wrestling figure Wednesday. And then, please forgive me for saying this, I used to like Grimm. He was a favorite, but I just got tired of Grimm. I mean, so if anyone's going to hate on me for not liking Grimm anymore, he was a favorite, but I just, I don't know. I mean, I kind of got tired after him after a while. Maybe I'll watch his videos again someday, but I just kind of need a break from Grimm. And sometimes his reviews are a little bit too much in your face. I mean, I don't know. And a little vulgar. Um, excuse the background noise. The trash truck's coming up, coming out to pick up the trash. <laughs> Alright, so hopefully I can get through this last question without the trash truck being too distracting. I'll not re record this part. You know it's funny, I mentioned Grimm. No, I'm not gonna make the joke because I'll get a lot of hate. I'm, I have nothing against Grimm personally as a person. I just sometimes I like his videos, sometimes I don't. Alright, for the last question that Zachary Zierzel wants to know Did you watch Leprechaun Origins? No. And here's the thing, I'm not big on horror movies. I never watched the original Leprechaun movies. And I didn't even know the new Leprechaun Origins was out. Yeah, I heard about that Hornswoggle was going to be in it, but obviously since WWE's not putting it as May um, yeah, movies in theaters like they were back when they first started. They're mostly doing the limited releases, then re put it straight on DVD a week after. Uh, I didn't see it. I had no interest in seeing it. And, I don't know, WWE hasn't done a whole lot of movies I wanted to see. I mean, whether it's got their superstars in it, or if it's something that they plan on making a major movie. I mean, there was a few that were good, but, I don't know. The only movies I can see of a superstar in it are The Rock. And, you know, he doesn't even work for WWE Studios. I mean, he does his own movies, so, yeah. I mean, other than that, um, not, what else, not much else to say, so... Yeah, I guess wrap the Q&A up right here. Alright, thank you guys for your questions. If you asked your question and didn't have a chance to have it answered on this video, don't worry, I will answer it on the next Q&A. And um, as always, you can leave your questions here. Just put REC Q&A before you ask them. And, you know, no more than three questions at max. And of course on Twitter and on Facebook because I do want more Facebook questions. Um, so yeah, and also remember, nothing too personal. Fun questions and if it's been... As before, I'm not going to answer it again, so I, and I will let you know. So, um, that's it. So, as always, feel free to keep asking questions at any time, because I really do appreciate it. It's channel shoutout time. This goes to Fats Toys. He's a fan of WWE, Ninja Turtles, Hot Wheels, Marvel, Star Wars, and much more. To check out her channel, click on the link in the description or click on the annotation as soon as it pops up. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. As always, feel free to leave me your comments about the review. Feel free to leave me your questions. And, of course, stay tuned for review number 30 next week. And, of course, you know, hit that like button. I, I appreciate it. You know, it kind of helps me out. And, you know, let your friends know about my channel if they like WWE figures or uh, Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers, uh, Hot Wheels even. I mean, anime, comics, so on and so forth. Just let them know because I always get to appreciate more subs. And, well, that's about it. So, as always, thanks for watching. Rock on and keep collecting. And have a nice day. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed this review. I will try to put up as many reviews as I can. And if you want to see my previous review, click on the video that's playing right now. And make sure to subscribe for more videos coming soon. And also like my page on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. As always, rock on and keep collecting.